13 of industrial instrumentations. Uh, we will continue with the flow meters. So, in the lesson 12 also we have seen the flow meters because uh, as I told you earlier that uh, the flow the very variety of the flow I mean uh, the variety of the instruments for measuring the process parameters like flow is are the huge in number. So, what you have to do we have to cover lot of sensors unlike the temperatures and pressure level uh, very few number of sensors are available, but due to the varieties and the environment conditions the number of flow meters are quite large in number. So, uh, this lesson 13 also is uh, for the flow meters. So, we have given the name flow meter 2. You see here the contents of this lesson is pitot tube which is extensively used for not only for the flow measurements also for the velocity measurements. Okay. If I can install and it is basically mostly used for the not for the liquid, but for the gas even for a high speed vehicles also I can use this for measurement of the uh, speed of the vehicles by using the Peter tube. One of the common I mean applications of the Peter tube is the aircraft speed measurements where in a high altitude. So, the, there is a differential pressure and another important thing this Peter tube as well as uh, as well as the elbow meters which is next you will find is basically depends on the differential pressure measurements. We have seen that uh, differential pressure uh, differential pressure measurement technique is utilized in the case of orifice meter and venturi meter. So, in pitot tube and elbow meter also we will see that we use the same principle that means, there is a differential pressures and that pressures is calibrated in terms of flow, flow velocity or the volume flow rate. So, the contents are pitot tube elbow meter, then rotameter is another example, but rotameter as you know it is a it is not the uh, differential pressure it is not the flow meter depends on the based on the differential pressure measurements it is basically variable area meter. So, that we will discuss in details how it works actually and also we will solve one problem on the uh, venturi meter. So, on the differential pressure meter so is either venturi and orifice. So, in this particular lesson we will consider one problem on the venturi meter right. So, at the end of this lesson the viewer will know the principle of working of Peter tube, advantage and disadvantage of elbow meter also its principle also will learn in this process. So, principle is common principle of working of repeater tube I mean elbow meter your uh, rotor meters everything will be all will be discussed here, but also we will discuss advantage and disadvantage of the elbow meter. Also we will see that rotor meter can be used as a linear sense that is a great achievement because in most of the differential pressure uh, in all differential pressure measurement based uh, flow meter you will find it is a relation between the flow and the differential pressure is non-linear. So, which creates a problem. So, we need some other circuitry to linearize which is not necessary in the case of rotor meter though it is usually used for very short range of flow measurement range is not much right. So, pitot tube you see uh, it is like this it measures the velocity at a point in a fluid right. That means, uh, it will measure particularly velocity at a point unlike the uh, unlike the orifice meter and venturi meter which measures a uh, over area I mean uh, if you look at the along the pipe if you go along the pipe. So, but the pitot tube is basically measure the velocity at a point particular point in a fluid right. So, this is very important that means, what I am saying here you see if I have if I take a whiteboard. And that means, what I am saying that if I have a pipe we have seen that in the case of orifice meter okay, or if I have a in the case of venturi meter we have seen. 
So, it is average the velocity at the whole point ok, it is like this one it average the velocity if I am interested by the Peter tube if I interested to measure the velocity suppose at this point of the fluid or at this point of the fluid or this point of the fluid by this of the fluid that is not possible in the by Venturi or orifice meter right, but it is possible by the Peter tube. And another important thing is it is an open channel meter, it is not a closed channel, you can use it as a closed channel meter, but you can use it as well as open channel meter. That means, I have a tube what they actually will discuss in details. So, this tube is installed ok inside the pipe, suppose this is a pipe. So, uh, depending on the installation I can move it little up here in this kind or I can move it down. So, I can at a particular point I can measure the velocity of the fluid right like wears this is also an open channel meter, but we can use it as a closed channel meter also. It measures the velocity at a point in a fluid, it is an open channel meter that I told you. It is suitable for investigation around an aerofoil in a wind tunnel or the measurement of velocity profile in a pipe prior to installation of the permanent flow meter. Sometimes some estimation is necessary that means, how much is the flow I mean before uh, I mean installing your flow meters like venturi meters or orifice meter or dull tube and flow nozzles. So, we need some uh, estimation. So, in that type of situation Peter tube is kind of easily inserted and take the measurement because you know that in the case of orifice meter venturi meter it is a very cumbersome devices it needs a lot of time but for the estimation this not you cannot spend that much of more time neither you know, nobody will allow to disturb the the installation but in the by the using the peter tube you can overcome that type of difficulties that i can estimate as well as i can measure quite accurately the flow flow velocity or flow measurements you can uh, see there uh, in the case of venturi meter and orifice meter also we are actually measuring the velocity then you are multiplying the area of cross sections finding the finding the total volume flow rate. Here we will uh, find the velocity then with the area if you uh, of the cross section of the pipe you multiply obviously you will also get the volume flow rate. The principal operations of Peter tube is like this. If a solid body is held stationary in a pipe in which the fluid is flowing with a velocity as the fluid in the tube approaches the body, the fluid particles are decelerated and until at a point directly in front of the solid body the velocity of the fluid is 0. Right? What does it mean? Let us take a blank wedge then it will be more clear. See here. So, what I am saying suppose a fluid I have a pipe and liquid is flowing through this right. Now, I put an object suppose like this one a solid object then what will happen? See here the liquid will flow, flow in this direction, flow in this direction all this direction. What happened to the fluid which is coming to this hitting this portion? It is coming to rest at that position ok. Suppose to be there if it is raised the pressure will be very high compared to the pressure of the fluid here right. So, that means, the liquid which is coming to the rest in contact. So, liquid so what will happen the fluid will be decelerated when it is coming approaching this solid body suppose if I take this is a solid body fluid will the fluid will be decelerated. So, at this point it will be total stop totally stop. So, velocity of the liquid at this point will be 0 exactly identically 0 and the velocity of the fluid suppose this is V. So, this liquid also flowing in the velocity V then it is flowing out again it is flowing out right, but whenever the fluid is flowing here. So, obviously, the just in front of this one if you look at here at this position the fluid will come to rest. Using this principles actually people developed the Peter tube right. Let us take the. So, again I will repeat if a solid body is held stationary in a pipe in which the fluid is flowing with a velocity as the velocity in the tube approaches body the fluid that solid body obviously, this is a pipe and solid body the fluid particles are decelerated until at a point directly in front of the solid body the velocity of the fluid is 0. 
velocity of the fluid is 0, right. So, accompanying the deceleration is an increase in pressure, right. That means, whenever I told you earlier also, that means what will happen? That means, I have a solid body here. Again, I am telling. So, liquid is coming and heating here. So, velocity at this point is 0, right. Velocity V it is flowing, right. This is the pipe pipe is flowing. So, what will happen here? I will take a new page. Okay. So, like this one it is flowing like this, right. So, what will happen you see here? So, I have a solid body so, which is coming and coming to. So, the pressure at that point will be high compared to the or highest I should say compared to the fluid I mean static pressure there, right. So, accompanying the deceleration is an increase in pressure. So, it is the process of converting the velocity head to an additional static head, right. We are calling it head because it is a um, uh, basically if you look at is basically we are uh, we are writing the equations in terms of the uh, liquid head, right. So, that is the reason we are to, because any I mean if the pressure is as you know H d g if you uh, divide by density and the acceleration due to gravity. So, obviously, it will be can be expressed in terms of only the height. That means, as you know the liquid the pressures is usually defined like this one is not at p equal to height to d into g. So, if we expressed if you multiply um, I mean divide by d and g obviously, I will get a if I write the boundary equations only in sorry only in the uh, only in the case of uh, in the terms of height. So, it will be all in I mean head. So, that is the reason sometimes we call it head. It is a process of converting the velocity head to an additional static head right because additional static head is coming velocity is becoming 0 the pressure is increasing. So, that is head is also increasing. The velocity of the fluid can be found by measuring the differential pressure again the same principles because this also depends on the basically the principle working depends on the measurement of differential pressure. At the impact hole or stagnation point the fluid is brought to rest and this point therefore, has no kinetic energy right. If the velocity is 0 obviously, the what is the kinetic energy half m b square if the velocity is 0 the kinetic energy also will be 0 right. So, use here you see the a, a p dot tube look at very carefully right. So, you see this is a p dot tube our liquid is flowing it is installed in a pipe I have not shown the pipe. So, pipe will be there right pipe will be there. So, pipe and inside the pipe it is going if I take a different color pin So, it is installed in a pipe please note always installed in a pipe right. So, this impact hole should always in a direction opposite to the flow velocity. Flow is flowing in this direction. So, the directly it is impacting here. Okay. So, it will to be installed in a direction where this that means, I am saying like this one if I, if I can see the camera here like this one you see the liquid this is pitot tube suppose right. So, this is our uh, static hole right impact hole or stagnation point I should say. So, what will happen here see the liquid is flowing here and hitting this position right and liquid is flowing over this one. So, there is a hole on this on this side okay. this side there is a hole the fluid is flowing in this direction and it is going out. Okay. So, liquid is I mean this it is impacting here. So, it, there is a point where the velocity of the fluid will be 0 if we consider this as a solid body. So, velocity of the fluid at this point will be 0 kinetic energy will be also 0, but there is a pressure. So, out inside the pipe also that pressures we are calling it static pressure right and this pressures the pressure at this one will be the stagnation pressure. So, obviously, the stagnation pressure since the velocity is 0 will be much higher than the static pressure right. So, the static holes usually can be collected as it happens in the case of venturi meters 
this static holes can be the static pressure can be sensed by piezometer rings that means it is averaging the um, pressures and this impact hole of stagnation pressure we can be measured by if I just take out one hole here and take it out. So, these two will give you the differential pressures right this minus this this pressure P 1 minus P 2 will give you the differential pressure. So, as the flow velocity increases P 1 will increase obviously, delta P will increase what will happen you see the delta P differential pressure So, this is equal to P 1 minus P 2 right. So, this P 1 minus P 2. So, this is stag this is the pressure differential pressure. So, this is our stagnation pressure. So, if the velo flow velocity increases P 1 will also increase. So, delta P also will increase right. So, this way so the by measuring this differential pressures I can calibrate this in terms of flow velocity right. And if I know the area of cross sections of the tube where it is installed that Peter tube I can measure the volume flow rate or if I installed on a some moving body this entire pitot tube is installed on a moving body like an air aircraft obviously, what will happen you know that um, I will measure the aircraft velocity or the velocity of any vehicles also. Only thing the problems we need a clean fleet because if the, there is a if there is a this hole is the, this is a small hole you can see here if this hole is clogged by some particles or dust. So, that will give us error not reading. Right, that, that is happened actually in the case of aircraft as you know when it goes to large I mean huge height. So, as you know the Boeing's and all these things they are going very high I mean around 33,000 feet 35,000 feet at the situation there is a uh, ice formations at the stagnation point then what they do they put a heater coil around this one right. So, continuously is melting that ice. So, there is no question of in getting in reading. So, the flow can be calibrated in terms of actually measuring the differential pressures I can measure the flow velocity or the velocity of the vehicles or aircraft on which it is installed. Let us go back to theory again right. Now, this is the you see the this is the relation between the velocity of air versus the differential pressure right x axis we have plotted the velocity of air and y axis we have plotted the differential pressure delta P which is in Pascal and velocity we are is meter per second and density of 1.2 kg per meter cube and differential pressure versus velocity of air measured by a pitot tube right. So, this is the figure as you can see we will do some calculation it is non-linear in nature you can see ok. So, this creates a problem both the kinetic energy and the pressure energy will be present at the static holes because fluid is moving at those positions right. Assuming energy conservation and no frictional loss and no heat loss obviously, we can write P 1 by rho 0 G z 1 P 2 by rho plus V 2 square by 2 into G z 2. You can look at very carefully all the units of this one will be in you see here that g is in if I take meter per second square right. So, g will be as uh, z will be in meter. So, it will be meter per second whole square this one this also will be meter per second square right p 2 uh, can be it is a pressure. So, Newton per meter square right. So, if you, uh, you if you simplify this one suppose this Newton means kg P is in Newton right. So, it means uh, it means that P is in Newton means you will find that is a kg meter per second square. So, if you divide by rho that is kg per meter cube again it will be. So, this p by rho you will find will be in meter per second square right. So, it will be like this 
right. So, all the units are same units of each item will be same because this is the there is no velocity of the uh, velocity at the stagnation. So, this is a stagnation part the Bernoulli's equation we have applied at the stagnation point this is the Bernoulli's equations applied at any other point of the fluid right. Here P 1 is the stagnation pressure P 2 is the static pressures and Z 1 is the elevations of the static I mean stagnation point and Z 2 is the elevation of the your static point right. If we have this line we can go to the next slide. So, where z 1 and z 2 are the elevations of the holes above the datum line and g is acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 meter per second square and if z 1 equal to z 2 then we can simply write v equal to 2 p 1 minus p 2 rho this is equation number 2. Now, whether the rho varies let us look at that. Now, from equation 2 we can write delta p equal to. So, this is delta p delta p equal to uh, v square into rho divided by 2 is not it differential pressure equal to half of rho v square, but delta b is the differential pressure p 1 minus p 2. So, v obviously, I can see here you can see this is the most important equation count for all differential pressure flow meter you can see this is v equal to v proportional to <coughs> root over delta p right. So, delta p if you calibrate in terms of v obviously, there is a nonlinear relationship right. So, for air at 20 degree centigrade and pressure P 2 of 10 to the power 5 Pascal that means, static pressures I am talking of with rho equal to 1.2 kg per meter cube gives delta P equal to 0 0.6 V square. Thus, at V equal to <coughs> 10 meter per second we have delta P equal to 16 60 Pascal and delta p by p 2 equal to 6 into 10 to the minus 4 and at v equal to 100 meter per second delta p equal to 6 into 10 to the power 3 pascals and delta p by p 2 into 6 into 10 to the minus 2. What does it mean? It means that when the flow velocity uh, the this does a low value of delta p by p 2 ratio means that for the velocity less than 100 meter per second 100 meter per second is a quite fast I mean quite high speed right. That means, the difference it is extremely high speed 100 meter per second right. The difference in density between the air at the stagnation point and the static holes is negligible right. The error introduced by considering the incompressible fluid is within 1 person right. Now, differential pressure transmitter is a special type of differential, differential pressure transmitter is necessary for uh, uh, particularly in this case. Due to low differential pressure, because if the uh, if the fluid velocity fluid is actually uh, air gas, so the differential pressure also will be less. Because um, as you know, the differential pressure also depends on the density of the fluid, right? So the air has a lesser density. So due to low differential pressure, so the your differential pressure also will be low. So we need some more sensitive differential pressure sensing element, because this differential pressure first we will sense and before converting to the electrical domain that is 4 to 20 milli ampere of current domain I need some uh, I need some high uh, I need I need some higher pressure higher differential pressures right. So, I need some more sensitive I mean this uh, type of system which will convert this uh, your differential pressure to some other change like capacitive change or any other change displacement change that can be converted in the electrical current domain of 4 to 20 milli ampere. So, the transmitter is made of a an LVDT sensor which senses the central point deflection of diaphragm capsule. So, we will have a diaphragm capsules ok we will discuss this one it, it looks like this if you look at uh, is a diaphragm diaphragm looks like this stretch diaphragm. So, if the pressure increases you know the diaphragm will be stretched like this. So, if the suppose this pressure is P 1 and this is P 2. So, P 1 minus P 2 will delta P. P 1 is always greater than P 2. So, it will be stretched like this one. Now, here if I put an core of an LBDT 
primary to secondary like this one right like this one. So, this is the output voltage of the this is E x. So, according to this movement I will get a voltage here is not it this is the principle of LVDT if the P 1 increases delta P rather delta P increases. So, it will move more and up and up. So, I will get unbalanced voltage here. Okay. So, that voltage is and since LVDT is quite sensitive as you know in fact, it is more sensitive than the capacitive sensors. Capacitive I mean type of differential pressure flow meters you have seen that is usually used in the case of orifice or venturi meter. But we need little special type or more sensitive uh, transmitter here because of the fact that uh, the differential pressure here is small. So, uh, LVDT is a very good choice because it is very sensitive as we have discussed in the case when we have uh, I mean taught the lessons of the, of the industrial instrumentation on LVDT. So, I can use uh, simply use an LVDT in that case in this particular situation right. Let us go back. So, it gives a 4 to 20 that voltage LVDT unbalanced voltage that means, the secondary voltage which is in oppositions can be converted easily to the current domain of 4 to 20 milli ampere output for differential pressure. For scheme of velocity you see everywhere it is like this one you have seen that in the case of this LVDT in the case of this flow measurements also what is the minimum flow that must be prescribed right. What is the maximum flow that also in the process it is fixed. So, what we will do we will accordingly we will fix our 4 to 20 milli ampere. So, the calibration is most important how will we calibrate. So, for the minimum flow velocity we must get 4 milli ampere of current for maximum flow velocity we must get a 20 milli ampere of current. Accordingly our electronic circuit that is converter which will convert because always you know that uh, there are many simple circuits are available for to convert this type of signals voltage to uh, current signals right. So, depending on the whether you suppose I have a 0 to 10 volt accordingly for 0 volt I want 4 milli ampere for 10 volt I want 20 milli ampere that type of things can be easily made right. So, similarly here also instead of suppose 0 volt I have a input voltage LVD outputs I am getting suppose um, 0 to 5 volt no problem. So, if it is 0 to 5 volt accordingly I can set my circuit some um, reference voltage resistance by, by which I can make 4 to 20 milli ampere of current right. Now, scheme of velocity measurement is shown in figure 3. You see here that you can see here the input is velocity v right I have a pitot tube I am getting a differential pressure of delta p. So, I have a dp transmitter. So, dp transmitter is basically here not capacitive it is a LVDT based then 4 to 20 milli ampere of current is coming. So, we have a data equation systems and we have a PC data equation system obviously, it will convert this current to the voltage domain then it is digitizing it before it giving feeding to the PC where I can record the, the flow velocity and if I have to take some actions that means, I have to feedback suppose this PC output through data equation card again can go back to the control valve to reduce the flow. Ultimately, the what is the use of this pitot tube and all these things I have to set some already the pre prescribed that this much of oxygen will flow or this much of hydrogen will flow in the pipe. So, to set that so I have to measure this um, velocity then if feed it back to the some control valve. So, that by which it will either open or close to keep to bring the flow velocity to the prescribed level right. Now, elbow meter uh, with this uh, elbow meter is a different kinds of systems it is actually usually used in a huge installations of the pipe is not is, is not suitable for the small bending of pipe. So, for the large bending of the pipe now in all the cases except Peter to Peter is usually is used for the gas you will find that um, uh, you will find that the, there is a large differential pressure and, and, and there is a loss permanent loss rather permanent loss in the both in the case of orifice meter and venturi meter. In the case of orifice meter we have seen that this loss is more in the case of venturi meter permanent loss is more in the case of venturi meter we have seen the permanent loss is less. Now, elbow meter is an uh, instrument it is also based on the differential pressure measurement, but that permanent pressure loss is not there, but in fact it is there in fact in not in that way because whenever there is a pipe bending there is a pressure loss as you know head loss is there. 
So, utilizing that principles without having any additional loss for the installations of the uh, installation of the uh, meter, we can have a elbow meter. Let us look at what is that. The orifice meter, flow nozzle, dull tube and venturi meter we have seen cause permanent pressure loss in the system. This will create the permanent pressure loss in the system, right. All this flow nozzle, dull tube less or more. So, obviously, it will make some permanent pressure loss. You have seen that in the case of venturi meter there is a I mean there are different types of venturi, but long, short in the long we have much better pressure recovery in the short we have less pressure recovery. In the case of orifice meter pressure recovery is worse right. Elbow meter does not introduce any additional losses in the system since it simply replaces an existing elbow or pipe bending that is being used to change the direction of flow. Right. In a process you will find that always you need this type of things that I have need some pipe bending somewhere okay, because pipe cannot all pipe cannot be straight in a process. So, you will find some there is pipe bending. So, in that bending we will install that meter. So, that no additional loss will be there. So, elbow meter does not introduce any additional losses in the system since it simply replaces an existing elbow or pipe bending that is being used to change the direction of flow right. You see here the elbow meters we have it looks like you see that I have this is a, this is a section of pipe bending I have shown here. You see this is a section of pipe bending you can see here this is a section of pipe bending right. That means, there is a pipe here, there is a pipe here, there is a continuous pipe and there is a pipe going also here in this direction right. So, just that pipe bending in at the end at the pipe bending I have installed this elbow meter. Fluid is flowing through the velocity v and it is coming out going out through this velocity and there will two only two pressure tappings there one will be inside the pipe another will be in outside the pipe. You see what will happen the liquid which is flowing through this pipe outer side of the pipe it will have much faster velocity than the pipe which is the liquid which is flowing through the inside this one right. It is usually increases in this direction it is maximum here and my minimum velocity is maximum here in this direction and minimum in this direction. Here everywhere the flow velocity if you take any point the flow velocity is supposed to be same right. But here what will happen the liquid which is flowing very near to the pipe bending it has much higher lower flow velocity and here we have a higher flow velocity according to the Bernoulli's, Bernoulli's theorem obviously what will happen the pressure to this one will be of the liquid excuse me liquid I mean will be much higher compared to the pressure because here the flow velocity will be flow velocity will be higher right. So, we have uh, dot arm point z i and z o from the dot arm level we have taken the height of the pressure tap this is the uh, I mean inside papers pressure tap this is the outside pressure tap this is our basic principle of the elbow meter. So, what the advantage that means you see that I am not putting any restrictions inside the pipe like orifice or venturi clear. So, velocity pressure and elevation above the dot arm level for pressure taps on the inside or outside surface of a 90 degree elbow can be related by the expression is that shape is 90 any bending in the industrial process is 90 degree that is the reason we call it 90 degree elbow can be related by the real expression C k equal to C k multiplied by V square by 2 g P naught by rho g plus Z naught minus P i by rho g minus Z i equal to and this is the equation number 3 right where C k is the coefficient that depends on the uh, geometry physically of the elbow that means shape and size of the elbow a normal of C k range from 1.3 to 3.2. Units you see here if I go back. So, C k v square by 2 g C k v square by 2 g P naught by rho g 0 P i rho g. So, all this units let us look at. P is in Newton per meter square, rho is kg per meter cube and g is meter per second square. So, all the units all the heads are in meter you can look at. So, P by rho g is in meter and z is meter. So, all are in coming in meter right. 
So, volume flow rate will be expressed as q equal to a v a upon root over c k 2 g p naught by rho g plus z naught minus p y by rho g minus z i c into a we have combined instead of writing a and root over c k we write c into a 2 g p naught by rho g plus j naught minus p i upon rho g minus z i equation number 4 right. Where a is the this should be where please note where a is the area of cross section of pipe in meter square. The value of c ranges from 0.56 to 0.88 and the primary advantage of the elbow meter is the savings of the extra pumping cost for the huge installation that is a good amount of saving right. So, the primary disadvantage is that of the each meter must be calibrated on the side. It is very difficult to I mean find the flow coefficients as you know that this value of the C ranges from we have always given the range. So, you have to install it depends on the slide pipe bending is not exactly 90 degrees something else may happen suppose it is an internal cross section exactly not in circular in shape. So, obviously, everything will uh, change the installation change the calibration constants or the your the discharge coefficient C right or flow coefficient C. So, that creates the problem. So, each and every installation that is true for even for almost all the installations right. Though we can suppose uh, we have a thermocouples we can calibrate it we can calibrate it in the laboratory, but it is better to install in to calibrate at the site itself. The primary disadvantage is that each meter must be calibrated on the site right. So, the low operating cost can usually justify the calibration cost the low operating cost can usually justify the calibration cost. The elevometer again the that restrictions of so the upstream flow restrictions and the downstream flow restrictions that means obstructions that means any pipe bending this that uh, will be there. So, that is that restriction is there which we had previously in the case of orifice and venturi. The elbow meter requires a minimum of 20 to 30 pipe diameters of unobstructed upstream flow to reduce the turbulence and shrill for accurate measurement otherwise the flow straighteners uh, are to be installed in to stabilize the flow as it is used in the case of orifice meter. It is a bundle of tubes all welded inside and put inside the pipe. So, the liquid will be I mean so it will eliminate all the turbulence uh, or reduce the turbulence and wear swell right. Now, rotor meter is a slightly different uh, it is a I mean, meter it basically depends on the um, is a variable area flow meter first of all. So, with this we are finishing this differential pressure meters we are starting now rotor meters. Rotor meter you see the basic principle is widely used for meter for flow rate indications. It is not uh, is for transmitting instruments or rather so I mean monitor it is basically a monitoring instrument, but you will find this meter is extensively used for many um, crucial applications or vital applications like biomedical applications also and also in the process we will find these are in plenty right. But basically it is a so far if the uh, if the indicating instrument is concerned I think rotameter has the only choice. If you look at the flow meters we have a several flow meters transmitting facilities and all these things, but if I want to make a simple I mean indicating type of instrument or monitoring type of instrument rotameter is the only choice please note that. The meter consists of a float or bob, bob is typically called in the industry people call it bob I do not know why anyway uh, within a vertical or transparent tube tapered to an increasing cross section area at the outlet it must be tapered ok if it is if it does not tapered that is not a rotameter. So, the meter consists I will repeat the meter consists of a float or bob typically called by the engineer in the process within a vertical transparent tube tapered to an increasing cross section area of the outlet right. The fluid entering through the bottom passes over the float which is free to move only in the vertical directions. The float can move only in the vertical directions right that is a problem rotameter always needs to be installed in the vertical direction right. The rotameter is always installed in the upright positions or in vertical directions. 
when the fluid is flowing through the meter the three forces are acting on the bob these are let us look at the rotameter now you see this is our rotameters right i have a can i take yes see the flow in the liquid is flowing through these directions and liquid is flowing out these directions so it is to be always installed in these directions vertical direction right there is a graduated scroll rotameter is accompanied by a graduate scroll you see this tapering so small that it's very difficult to if you look at the, the rotameters it's like a very difficult it's a, usually its size is like this pen most of the rotameter will find it's like with this pen the size is very small it's not that very huge in size you'll find this size right and it is slowly increased in taper angle is slowly so the bottom it is a smaller angle included an angle so it is slowly increasing right so that means it is increasing here slowly it is increasing in this direction but this tapering so small that is with the naked eye it's very difficult to visualize because this rotameter since it is made of hard i mean uh, glass or i mean strong glass what they do you'll find it puts on a casing also on the back side it is getting only some front side you can see right that we have seen in the case of in, the, in our first lesson one we have shown some rotameter so liquid is coming in this direction there is through pipe it is coming in this direction it is going up then it is moving in this direction again i will tell liquid is flowing in this direction it is going inside the pipe inside the rotameter look it is flowing through this then it is going out right and the float is moving inside the pipe float can only move in these vertical directions right float can when the flow increases the float will move like this one when the float decreases the float will come down here and it will totally fit the inside diameter of the pipe the float is designed like that it will fit the inside diameter of the pipe right there are different shape of the float that will be discussed later on so three forces you see the three forces are acting on the rotameter what are those forces weight of the system okay mass of the system buoyancy force and drag force now weight of the system that will act downward and buoyancy and the drag force will act upward right so this fw will always balanced by fd and ab then fw equal to ab plus fd that is always so rotameter you can see this is basically an auto balancing system because you see this fw and ab will remain constant because that is the weight and the buoyancy of a liquid if the liquid is same if the liquid is same that means same type of liquid is flowing through the pipe it does not matter what is the velocity density will remain same if the density is remain same density of the fluid remain same your buoyancy force this also will remain same and since we are not changing the bob that fw also will remain same so ab plus fw will be equal to fd then fd also should remain same that is the main main interesting point in rotameters rotameter is a basically you can it is auto balancing system so if you look at it it is very interesting part this is the auto balancing systems right let us look at that principle of operations how it works for a given flow rate the float remains stationary when the weight of the float is balanced by the buoyancy and the drag force buoyancy and drag force will act upward because flow of the liquid is always from the lower to like flow of the liquid is always like this one that means i have a rotameter here so flow of the liquid is always in this direction right balance buoyancy and a drag force so the float will this will act downward fb that's you have seen already fb wait and fd and fb balance like this one it is auto balancing system that's you must note how the why i am calling it auto balancing system so it will be clear from the subsequent points the annual area between the float and the vertical tube varies continuously with the vertical displacement of the float or bob how this annual area is changing yes, yes obviously it will change you see look at let me take a white page you see rotameter is looks like this let me take a different color pen let me take another one so we have a rotameter here
if I look from the top what will happen? It will look like this you see here the liquid is flowing through this. So, what is this annual area? As you move up what will happen? The area of cross section if you find leaving this one will increase area of cross section will remain I mean it is always increasing as you go up right as you go up in area of cross section increasing area of cross section of the float is also same. So, the annular area that means if I look at here annular area which is the shaded area will change as the this float goes up that means I am telling that the area of annular area at the position of the float if I think of the area annual area at the position of the float that will increase if the float goes up is not at the float go comes in it is annual area will be no more. So, at that time what will happen float will just fit on this one in that case it will there is no no annual area. So, at the flows this float goes up the annual area increasing and increasing right this principles we are discussing clear we are so, the annual area between the float and the vertical tube varies continuously with the vertical displacement of the float or bob, right. For a particular liquid the weight of the float as I told you the weight of the for a particular liquid weight of the float is constant, buoyancy force is also constant. Therefore, the drag force is to be maintained as a constant level, drag force must be constant also. For a particular liquid the weight of the float and the buoyancy force are constant therefore, the drag force is to be maintained at a constant level right. Since the area of cross section of the float is constant the pressure drop across it should be constant. Since the area of the cross section of the float is constant the pressure drop across it should be constant right this is a key point. Now, when the float is in particular position for a flow rate the differential pressure varies with the square of the flow rate clear. When the float in a is in a particular position for a flow rate the differential pressure varies what is the differential pressure across the flow across the float differential pressure across the float. When the float is in particular position a flow rate for a flow rate the differential pressure varies with the square of the flow rate right. So, now therefore, to keep this differential pressure constant for some other flow rate. So, when the differential pressure differential pressure must be constant otherwise the drag force will not be constant. Drag force must be constant because it is equal to F w plus F d F w plus uh, sorry I mean F w equal to F d plus F by and C weight must be counterbalanced by the buoyancy and the drag force. So, drag force must be constant. So, to keep since the differential pressure is constant. So, obviously what will happen the area of the annual area must change that means the float must move up and down right. Therefore, to keep the differential pressure constant for some other flow rate the annual rate area in between the float and the vertical tube must change. Must change means if the differential pressure as the, as the flow increases differential pressure is constant. So, to keep the drag force constant what will happen the flow area must change right right. Now, the variable area is provided by this vertical tube this variable area as I told you in the earlier you see between the float annual area that is if you if you do not meet tapper then this this type of thing will not be achieved. So, the position of the float can be made essentially linear with the flow rate by making the area of cross section of the tube vary linearly with the vertical height right. Considering the incompressible flow the volume flow rate is expressed as it is expressed as this is the equation C d equal to A t minus A b 2 g b b b rho b rho f a b rho f a t a b so, let us look at what are those. So, this is the flow coefficient or the discharge coefficient a t is the area of the tube area of cross section of the tube area of cross section of the float sorry uh, bob or float whatever area of cross section of the tube area of cross section of the float area of cross section of the 
tube this is the volume of the bob okay this is the density of the material of the bob this is the density of the fluid this is the area of the bob and this is the density of the fluid okay we have written all this in the in the all the legends are given in the next slide let us look at where key is the volume flow rate in meter meter cube per second then c d is the discharge coefficients a t is the area of cross section of the tube in meter square a b is the area of cross section of the float or the bob in meter square b b is the volume of the float in meter cube rho b is the density of the float in of the material is so kg per meter cube rho f is the density of the flowing fluid in kg per meter cube okay now if we assume that there is no variation of the discharge coefficient with the float position we assume the discharge coefficient does not changes with the float position which changes uh, obviously and if we assume that a t minus a b square by 2 is much much less than 1 if i go to the previous slide it is more clear okay i am assuming that the cd is constant okay and this portion that is a t minus this portions that means i am talking of this portion this a t minus a b by a t whole square is much much less than 1 then okay so a t minus a b less than the equation 5 can be simplified to q equal to k a t minus a b because all the titan is simply constant is not it in that equation. So, the volumetric flow rate equal to k a t minus a b where k is equal to c d root over under the square root 2 g volume of the bob b b rho b minus rho f upon a b into rho f right this is our constant k. So, now if the cross sectional area of the vertical tube varies linearly with the float position if the if we vary the cross section of the I mean tube in such a way it varies linearly with the I mean with the float position then I can write the volume flow rate equal to q equal to k 1 plus k 2 x okay, to constant and x x is the position of the float right position of the bob right. So, the rotameter usually has an accurate range of 10 is to 1 that is better than the square root sensor. So, that is quite obvious. So, is the square root sensor much better than the square root sensor. Square root sensors we have seen that, that the um, 25 percent less than 25 percent of the maximum full scale range the error is this reading is very much erroneous that is not the case in the case of rotameter right. Now, shape of the rotameter. So, what we will see that uh, in the case uh, previous you will find that that we have seen also that if we take a, uh, a different color. So, we have seen that it is tapered like this one ok, the float is moving like this one. So, it is in a casing ok and it is a graduated scale is there right. So, this is liter per minute or liter per second whatever the way you like actually represented right. So, this is the float. So, this is calibrated in the I mean volumetric flow rate or I mean velocity. So, this is the volumetric flow rate it is calibrated. So, whenever by looking at the position of the bob I can if I look at here I can tell that the what is the flow velocity right. So, this is very important in the case of uh, rotameter. So, it is basically used for the, the basically used for the monitoring instruments or indicating instrument, but not for in transmission instrument right. But that does not necessarily mean that accuracy is poor accuracy is quite good in the case of rotameter as I told you and you will find that it is extensively used in the case of anesthesia as you know that uh, when the patients I mean under operation first they put an injection physicians for uh, to go the patient under they say that my the patient will go some subconscious state right to maintain that state they must have continuously supplied gas so that the patient will remain. So, to how much gas they will put 
to the patient nose. So, that will be they measure by the flow meter the rotameter and there the float uh, uh, let me go back again I am sorry shape of the rotameter you will find uh, that uh, the float is actually they are using some light heavy plastic sort of thing. So, by looking at the position of the float I can tell how much gas is we I am giving to the patient that because this is very important those who do are the anesthesia for they actually looking at and determining that regulating the valve they are controlling the how much liquid is flowing how much fluid is going to the patient right. Now, floats with sharp edges are less sensitive to fluid viscosity that changes with temperature right. So, the you will find that because viscosity of the liquid as you know it changes with temperature right. So, the but if I make the uh, float the sharp edges that will be almost independent of viscosity right. Vertical tube of the rotameter is made of glass to make it a monitoring instrument. Rotameters are used in application. So, the accuracy is not a prime concern, but it is not that inaccurate also otherwise it cannot be used in biomedical application such like very crucial when the get because if you give more gas uh, to the patient. So, the patient will die and if you I mean yeah, and if you reduce the supply of gas to the patient. So, what will happen patient will come out of the subconscious state I mean physicians cannot operate. So, till the operation is complete the patients will be under that state. Now, here now we will solve one problems on the venturi meter you see here the problem looks like this. A venturi meter is to be used to measure the flow rate of water in a pipe of diameter d will it 0.2 meter the maximum flow rate is 2136 meter cube per minute venturi is with throat diameters of 0 0.10 meter 0 0.12 meter and 0 0.14 meters are available. Choose the most suitable venturi meter assuming the differential pressure at maximum flow is 918 kg per meter cube and calculate the accurate value of the differential pressure developed across the chosen venturi at maximum flow rate right. This is our now we have given some uh, chart also here see table for orifice split this is beta equal to uh, we have seen that some chart for Reno numbers how much the flow coefficient changes. So, table for venturi also we have given this is the pipe and throat diameters for the different Reno numbers how the discharge coefficient changes ok that is we have given these are tables are necessary for solving the problems of the venturi meter and orifice meter right. This is one other chart we have given last chart we have given that is the the Reno numbers how the beta changes several orifice plate of 0 0.05 millimeter meter that is the dimensions of the orifice. Uh, so, you find that the how much the Reno number changes right. So, let us solve the problem here you see the problem is like this one uh, here C D we can see for C D is equal to 0.1 Okay, is not it? Yeah. Four point. Uh, sorry, let me take new page. So rho equal to one thousand kg per meter cube. So from that, if I apply the our venturi meters formula, we will find that Q equal to I am getting three forty meter cube per second. Now, here I am taking that d uh, uh, equal to 0 0.01 meter for which C d is coming from the chart 0.988 ok. Venturi meter always you know the flow coefficients is very high right. Then we have we can find for d equal to 0 0.12 meter we have calculated from the formula that that C D will come 0.987. So, the Q 2 the this is the Q 1 if I assume the Q 2 will be equal to uh, 507.6 meter cube per second right. So, if I take a new page now, for d equal to 0.14 meter, we will find C d equal to 0.985 meter 
0.9.985. So, Q3 equal to equal to 737 meter cube per second. So, we can see that the point uh, the orifice meter with point 0.10 uh, meter diameter is the best choice right because that is the most close one. And in this case for this type of situations in the case uh, we can calculate that the delta p uh, max if I apply this again this our main formula. So, now we will apply this one 0.20 that means it will be uh, you will find if you take a new page it will be like this one. So, it will be 3.56 into 10 to the power 4 0.988 by 0.968 you will find. So, you will put the all other pi 25 root over 2 delta p g you will find that the delta p max will be 1006.1 kg per meter square right. So, this is our equation right. So, this is the so best choice is 0 0.10 meter and delta p max will be 1006.1 kg per meter square. This ends the lesson 13 of industrial instrumentation. Thank you.